Okay. There's plenty of rooms in the back. Anybody wants to move back there? All the seats aren't taken yet, so feel free to move back. Glad you're here tonight. We're going to have a good time. We're going to worship God, and he's going to bless us. Amen? Amen? Let's start together. Father, we love you, and we thank you for this day and for this time. We're here, God, under your direction. And you would never tell us to be somewhere if you weren't going to be there ahead of us. So, God, we know you're here. And I'm just asking you now to know everything we do. God, let us not worship you in ourselves, but worship you in the Spirit. Let us not hear what thus saith the Lord, but let the Lord speak through us words of wisdom. God, I pray for a great anointing upon this sermon and upon these people this night. And let us prepare ourselves with worship through song, through music. Give ourselves to you wholly and without reserve. And just tell you, we sure do love you by the way that we act. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you can see tonight we've got the drums. Woohoo! <laughs> and look. You have words. Woohoo, right? <laughs> hey, we're trying, right? Let's give it out. A shout out to our media back there for helping us all in our sound, helping us get all set up. We have power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> If I turn them off, y'all don't go to sleep even further. I need you to smile. Smile. We're in God's house tonight. Amen. Amen. Are you washed in the blood? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. 
many of you had to call out to the Lord Jesus this week for just any kind of help? Amen. I heard this song, and I had forgotten about it. It's, you know, it was one of my favorites, and I had forgot about it. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, yes, we're going to do that song. And then I sent out the text to the praise team, and I said, Nan, you're going to do the verses. <laughs> Nan said, okay. <laughs> In the presence of Jehovah. I love this song. In the presence of Jehovah, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of our king. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes when I don't have a prayer, sometimes when I just don't know what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do and I'm just feeling numb, I just say Jesus. And the peace just comes over just in the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the prayer. Let's make this our worship song.
Father, we are grateful tonight to be able to sing such a song in the presence of Jehovah. Lord God Almighty, and God, that in your presence, troubles seem to vanish. As we've already said, God, we've entered into your presence tonight in a very special way. And I'm praying, God, for troubles to vanish and for us to have freedom to worship, freedom to praise, freedom to pray, freedom to hear, freedom to respond. God, just anoint this service, anoint your people. And let your word come forth in a very special way. And we thank you for it. We pray it in your precious holy name. Amen and amen. I hear you. I'm just trying to decide to whether to do what I was told to do. <laughs> you want to testify, right? Well, somebody told me to ask you how much money have you got. <laughs> well, I'm not calling Jimmy's name or anything, but I just want you to know what I'm doing what he told me to. We have a special testimony tonight, and I knew she was going to do it. So either talk loud or we're going to give you a mic. We've always got time <clears throat> for praises unto God for the goodness and greatness of God that he says he will do if we'll just cry out to him. So I'm grateful for that, and we thank him for it. At the end of the service tonight, uh, after I pray and we dismiss, I want you to stay right where you are, and we're going to have a, a little something extra we need to do tonight, but we'll do that at the end if you would. Tonight, I want you to, um, if you have your Bibles, and you don't have to turn there because you know it, but if you have your Bibles and want to turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, you can, but we all know that scripture. And what I, what I want to do tonight is I want to talk to you about this verse because this perhaps may be um, one of the most misunderstood verses in the Bible. A lot of things have been said about it, and a lot of people claim a lot of things with it. Then a lot of times things don't get done when someone stands up and pro proclaims it. So I want us to look at it and sort of diagnose this verse just a little bit and see if I can't help you with it. Um, Candy, good to have you home. Glad you had a safe trip back. Glad everything went good. Just now saw you there. 413 just simply says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Anybody in here that has never quoted that verse? Right. See, that's, that's the thing. Anybody ever quoted that verse and didn't have anything to happen? Really? So all the rest of you, when you quoted that verse, everything you wanted happened. Anybody ever quoted that verse that didn't get, didn't, didn't get what you asked for? Thank goodness, because I was just going to go out there and preach to me if I was the only one in that case. Me and Brother Ed, he said he had too. You know, that, yeah, we, I guarantee if you've ever prayed that verse, you've, you've come up empty sometimes. And there are various reasons for it. I want to look, Paul, in, 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 in bringing this verse out, I want to back up and look at a couple of verses before it. And it says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now, at the last, your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Paul was getting on to him a little bit. He said, you had the opportunity and the chance to help me, and you didn't do it. But I'm sure glad you're helping me now. So look at his mindset, and look what he's saying. He's not getting on to them. He's just saying, I'm sure glad you're doing something now. And then he says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. So Paul very quickly comes back and says, I didn't say that because I need something. I'm not asking you to give me anything. Because I've learned a great lesson in my life that whatever state I'm in, to be content. So you had opportunity to do something for me and you didn't do it. But I was content. Now you're doing something. I'm content. I've learned. Somehow he learned a great lesson that all of God's people today need to learn. And I'm talking about we can just talk about us in this room right here tonight. All of us need to learn this lesson. That whatever state I'm in, I have learned to be content. Amen. I know both how to be abased or how to be made low, be sad. And I know how to be abound or to be happy. I know how to be up. I know how to be down. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. So he says, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, I've learned to be content. Whether I'm full from eating or whether I'm starving, I've learned to be content. Whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. There's that word, learned. I've learned. That is something that was being taught by someone or something to him. Therefore, I learned. You can never learn without being taught. It has to be a teacher for you to learn anything. So he said, I've learned it. And then he says, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Now, if you look at that verse and look at the ones I've just read, I've learned whatever state I'm in to be content. If I'm happy or I'm sad, I can be content. If everything's going right, if everything's going wrong, I'm content. If everybody loves me, if everybody hates me, I've learned to be content. If I have plenty, if I have nothing, I've learned to be content. I've learned it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now look at the way he says that. After, after setting it up with those verses, I've learned something. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What is all things? If you get a hold of that tonight, if you can make yourself follow me and you can understand what all things is, then you can be taught the same lesson that Paul was taught, and then it's going to be up to you to whether or not you learn it. So let's look at some of this and look at some of the misconceptions about this verse for a moment and look at some of the right things about it. Understand this, whatever God commands us to do, he enabled us to do it. 
Whatever God provides, whatever we need, God provides. If God tells you to come up here and to preach tonight, he would give you the words to preach. Amen. Understand that? If God gives you, tells you, I want you to go up and sing a certain song tonight, then God would give you what you needed to stand here and sing that song. Does it mean you'd do it the best compared to somebody else? That has nothing to do with it. God just gives you what you need to do it. So in, in all of life, whatever God calls us to do, he will enable us or equip us to be able to do it. If everything's good on your job, you can be content. If everything's bad on your job, you can be content. If your best friend loves you, you can be content. If your best friend walks out on you, you can be content. If your marriage is at a bliss up here like you hadn't experienced in a long time, you can be content. But if your marriage is down here in the bottom somewhere where you can't even see, you can be content. Why? Because I've learned something. I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. What are the all things? Number one, God will not give us the strength to sin. So people will quote this verse. I can do all things through Christ so I can sin. God will not give you the strength nor the power to sin. Understand that. So when we just flippantly throw that verse out there, I can do all things through Christ. You better be very careful because there better be power behind your words or they're nothing. So I can go out there and do wrong because God gives me the strength and the wisdom and he loves me and he takes care of me. Don't ever go there because you can't do it. And the Bible says God is not the author of fear, confusion. Understand that. Then I can't go out there and fear because God gives me the strength. I can't be confused because God gives me the strength. That may sound silly to you, but I'm telling you the world that takes these words and they mess them up pretty good sometimes. Don't be part of that. Well, I can fail because God gives me strength to fail. <laughs> Sounds silly, but so does the doctrine of the world. So does the doctrine of the world, and you have to be very careful with it. In, God can't give us the, the power or the ability to do anything of the flesh that represents Satan. God is not involved in that. So don't ever try to fix that up and apply God to it. God is good. God is holy, God is righteous, God is pure, so God can never give you the strength to do something outside of whatever God is. He'll never do that. So that's the first thing we'll rule out. So what is I can do all things? Then what is that all things? All of a sudden all things become smaller because we've eliminated something. It doesn't mean that I can go out and do supernatural feats. It doesn't mean that. And I really believe this is one of the areas where we get in trouble. I can do all things. So, I, I can do all things. So, Maria is being attacked in her body with cancer. Therefore, as a child of God, I can come over and I can lay hands on her. And I can pray the prayer of faith and she'll be healed. That is not in God's word. I can do all things, but that does not include feats and certain physical and supernatural things that only God can do. And we have to be very careful about that. You have to be very careful about letting people lay hands on you. Because if they're not children of God, those hands represent Satan, not God. To be very careful. Remember the story in the Bible where the disciples are going about doing great miracles, and this man who was, a, who was an evil man comes up, and he wants to buy the power that they have to perform these great miracles. He thinks he can buy it. And that's the mindset of the world today. They see great things happen, and they want it. But they're not willing to pay the price that God desires. They think they can pay a human price and get it and do it. 
But there comes a special anointing from God. So supernatural feats. You can't jump over the moon. See, that would be a, a supernatural feat. You cannot perform miracles just because you want to. Well, I can quote this verse. I can do all things through Christ, so in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. No. I can do all things through Christ. So we can eliminate now supernatural feats. You can't do that. You can't tell the sun to stand still and it'll do it. You can't tell the tide to go back out when it's trying to come in and it happened. You can't do that. These are things that God controls. And we have to understand that. These all things are simple things. I can do all things. They're simple things that God's in control of. So if it's not those two things, let's look at what it is. I can do whatever is the will of God for me to do. Amen. You need to get a hold of that. And if you believe that tonight, then let's look at the picture. Paul said, I have learned that sometimes I am starving, yet I am content. I've stuffed myself, and I'm full, and I am content. I have money to buy whatever I need, and I'm content. I lack $14 having 27 cent. I'm content. I've learned in whatever state I'm in to be content. He said, I've learned that because Paul understood that whatever state he was in, if he was in the direction of the Holy Spirit, if he was under the guidance and the power of God, whatever state he was in is right where God wanted him to be. Amen. Amen. So he said, I've learned to be content. It has nothing to do with my circumstances. It has nothing to do with these things around me. It's all something within me that tells me I am where God wants me. Therefore, I'm content. And you know, in, in, in right here in our church, there are many various opinions about COVID. Do you wear a mask? Do you not wear a mask? Do you hug? Do you do an elbow? Do you via fist, fist pump? Do you just say, hey, do you text, do you call? We've all got different opinions, and every one of them are right. There's no wrong answer when you come to that, because that's an individual thing. But even at that, and, and you can see, even with that, where we all have different opinions, the one thing that is certain and sure for every Christian is that wherever God has you, learn to be content. If it's in the middle of a battle, be content. If it's up on the mountaintop looking down at the valley, be content. If it's out cleaning a commode, be content. If it's up here doing the pastor's work, be content. Because we are where God wants us to be. And I'm telling you something. God puts us in the lion's den many times in our lives in one way or another. God allows us to get into that fiery furnace many times in our lives in one way or another. God puts us in some great storms on that sea at times one way or another. And God brings that great northeastern, that Eurocritum, that great wind that comes and just beats everything around us. And everything we have is destroyed and we have nothing left except our lives. And we got to understand that's where God wants us. And when you can learn that and you can understand that principle, then we will quit griping and we will quit belly aching and we'll start claiming this verse the way that Paul meant for us to claim it. As long as I'm in God's will, I'm going to be content. Amen. It depends on nobody else whatsoever. It doesn't matter what this person has or this person has or what this person can do for me or that person can do. It has nothing whatsoever to do with that. Anything God calls me to in his word, I'm going to be content. Amen. 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 Won't you say this with me? God, God whatever, whatever 
you want, wherever you want me to be, teach me how to be content. Now, church, if you meant that, it could change your life. Change your life. Change your life if you can actually mean that. I believe there is something great on the horizon for Kettle Creek Church. Now, I'm telling you that I'm not just, I'm just not speaking wind. I'm telling you the truth. And God was showing me today that the only way it can come about is for this church to get ready to do what God wants the church to do. It's not about you looking at me and hoping I get myself ready so God can use me or else get rid of me and bring the right person in here so that person can do what God wants. It has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with every one of you individually getting to the place where God wants you. And when you get to the place where God wants you and you can learn to be content with it, you watch what happens. Watch what happens. It's not going to be about choice of whether or not I'm going to church. It's simply be, what am I going to wear? See? See, we've got to get God's will. What does God want you to do? I just didn't feel like going to church tonight. I had nothing to do with it. Where does God want you? What does God want you to do? Every time a door is open, God wants us to be in his house. Every time a door. Now, there are times. Sure, I'm not that, that dumb. There are times we can't. But not, not the excuses, reasons. God wants us in his house. God wants us praying for one another. God wants us fellowshipping. That's what the church is missing today. Those who won't come is the fellowship of the saints. They're having a fellowship with the world out there, which is full of the pure devil, but they're missing the fellowship of the saints. Amen. How important is a hug? Very, very so what would Satan take away from us? The hug. Way back in the Bible, how did they greet each other? With a hug and a kiss. Even back in Jesus' time, it was important. It was necessary. What does a baby need when it's born? The warmth of a mother, the feel of a parent. They need that affection. They need that love. They need that fellowship. It reassures them on the inside. And those who are missing church are missing that point. And it doesn't have to be a hug. It can be a handshake. It can be an elbow bump. It can be a smile. Whatever it is, but they're missing that. And Satan is trying to separate the people from the very thing that keeps us united to God. Amen. we got to be careful, church. we got to be careful. See, we we, we got to understand whatever God wants me to do, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do it. This church must make up your mind. And maybe I'm talking to the wrong group of people because you're here. You know, <laughs> I understand that. But the thing is, we got to be reassured. Be here. Do what God wants you to do. Be ready. Do everything. Get yourself in that state. I'm going to be content. Change some things about you that need to be changed. Next, the next thing we have to do is we got to do our part. If I can do, I have learned that I can do all things through Christ. Now, we've got to do our part. I can do whatever, I, you know, wherever God wants me, I can be content. Whatever God wants me to do, I can be content. Well, that's true. But then there is something that we must do. It's not all left up to God. He tells us, but we got to go, don't we? I want you in church to get up, we got to go. I want you to read your Bible, so we got to read. I want you to pray, so we got to pray. I want you to give, so we got to give. I want you to do this, we got to do it. So God's not going to do those things that He expects us to do. And He doesn't expect us to do the things that only He can do. God's going to do His part, we've got to do our part. I have learned. I, I have learned. See, I got to do my part. Learning is a process that I can do. I can do, not God. I can do. See, we want, I have learned that God can do anything through me that he wants to do. That's not what he said. I have learned that I can do all things through Christ. I'm doing it through Christ. So we've got to do whatever God expects us to. If we want the grace of God, we've got to do our part. You can't sit back there and expect God to give you his grace and his love and his mercy when you're not doing anything. We've got to apply ourselves until we know we've done everything that we can do that we should do. And then we're going to see God do what he can do. But we, he's going to meet us there. 
But I can't stay over here telling God to come over here and bring it all over here, and then I'll sit here and I'll rejoice with you. God say, no, I want you to get over there. And I can say, well, God, I don't feel like it. Feeling has nothing to do with it. I can do. Well, God, you know, I, I can hardly walk. It has nothing to do with it. I can do. See, the woman with the, that, that wanted to get to Jesus to be healed, she had to crawl on her hands and knees because she couldn't walk. She had to be stomped on and thrown dirt on and stuffed on and everything else because she couldn't get to Jesus, but she made a way. And that's what God expects us to do. We've got to meet him. It's not always halfway. Sometimes it's 99% of the way we've got to go, and sometimes it's 1% of the way. That's none of our business. We've just got to go until God meets us. And he said, if you'll go and do, I will meet you. I will provide for you. I will show you, and I will do through you. But we must do our part. We can't do our part if we've got unconfessed sin. What holds so-called Christians back from doing God's work? So many times it's unconfessed sin. We've done something we know is wrong, and we walk in that church, we sort of have this feeling. We know we shouldn't have done it. We know it was wrong. And after, after I turn the TV off tonight, I'll, I'll have a prayer and I'll confess it. See, because we don't believe that Jesus is coming before we get home. See? See what sin does to you? It weakens you, and you'll believe a lie. So a lot of times God tells us to do something, and we don't feel like doing it, so we can, we can say something or do something different because sin is holding us back. We're not fully committed. We, we've got to get to a point in our Christian life where nothing matters other than the will of God in my life. And see, that sounds good, and we'll amen that, myself included. But when it comes to getting there and doing it, it's a whole different ballgame. Because as surely as you do that, somebody invites you out on Wednesday night to eat. Well, I can't turn them down. I mean, I, I haven't eaten with them in six weeks now. Thank God, you know, he's going to buy the meal, and I'm hungry. See, nothing else matters except the will of God in your life. If I, if, if, I, if I could get Kettle Creek to believe that, we could fill this place up with believers and have the power to do anything in Jesus' name. Anything is possible when God's people get together and let him work in their lives. All right? So if God doesn't work in us when we have sin in there, then what we have to understand then is if once we get saved and we start believing in the power of God, then we understand that nothing is impossible to God. Nothing. See, if I were to ask you tonight, how many of you believe that we're going to pray for Maria and she's going to be instantly healed of cancer? probably everybody in here would raise your hand because you believe that. Why do you believe that? You ever thought about it? A lot of times because of this verse right here. The verse says that the preacher pray for Maria in faith, she'll be healed. See, why, why do we believe that she can be healed instantly of cancer? We all want her to be healed instantly of cancer, don't we? That's why we say it. But how many of us had the faith to believe for it? So if I said to you tonight, how many of you believe that by faith Maria can be healed of cancer instantly, we'd all raise our hands. And I'd say, okay, God has spoken to me. And God told me that tonight we're all to stay here and pray for the next 12 hours for Maria and not go home. Amen. Now what will we do? The sheep will be separated from the goats. <laughs> now, I've got to have sleep to go to job tomorrow. I've got to get to the job. Yeah. What would we do if I told you that? Well, God didn't tell me. 
See, there comes a point where we will believe up to a point, but then when it requires something of us that we don't want or is inconvenient, then we won't go that far. And we'll say something like, y'all pray for it, and I'll be praying at home. That's like people tell me, I won't be at church, then my spirit will be there. I can't hug your spirit. <clears throat> All right. So we've got to get to the point they believe nothing is impossible to God. Nothing's too difficult. The power of God is greater than anything I'll ever face. I mean, you believe that. The power of God is greater than anything I'll ever face. You've got to put your name there. There's no trial too hard for me. There's no obstacle too strong for me. There's no mountain too high for me. No temptation that's too powerful for me. There is no persecution that's too threatening to me. There is nothing that I'll ever face in my life that is impossible for God to handle. Nothing. Why can't we as a church get a hold of that? Why don't we believe that? And, and, and you know, the thing is, we believe it to a degree, but then doubt comes in and we run to the doctor. Or we call somebody and we ask for advice. Or we, well, we start figuring out how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. And I can do this and I can do this and I'll sell this and I'll sell that and I'll get this and I'll do that and I'll see if I, you know, why do we do that? Why do we just go into convulsions and break out in the hives sometimes in our lives? Because we get so confused and so upset about these things that is nothing to God. Why do we do that? It's because we haven't learned this verse. I have learned that whatever, whatever state I'm in to be content. Let me give you a thought that God just gave me. We have to be very careful about this. When everything is going good, when your finances are good, and you don't have any worries, you can be content. But God just said, think about this when that's all going so good for you. There's somebody right around you that's at the other end of the spectrum. Let God use you to help them. Because if you can be content where you are, knowing that you've been down here, then help that one's down here and bring them up because you may be the one down here that God needs to send somebody to. Amen. That was just free. The next thing is that we must realize that God works in the deepest part of us. I have learned that whatever state I'm in, to be content. That goes down to the very heart and soul of me and you. Where do we learn? We do not learn that in our brains. This is not head knowledge that Paul's talking about. Because head knowledge changes with circumstances. It changes. So what you know up here, tomorrow may be out of date. But whatever God gives us goes into the heart. And it never changes. Never. What I'm teaching you tonight will never change. I can do. No, I can do. All things through Christ. So that means that I, I'm sitting here just like you are. And we've got a service going on. And I'm sitting here and God says to me, I want you to go up and tell the pastor you love him. In the middle of the service. <laughs> I want you to tell Stephanie that you're going to be in the choir. If we ever have a choir again. May not. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. Why would we say that? When God prompts you, why is it that we immediately go into the defensive state and want to give excuses for why we can't do what God's calling us to do? And the reason for it is that when God tells us something, He is equipping us to do something powerful. 
So immediately the enemy comes against us to disarm us in our faith so that we will fail and falter, and that great and powerful work that God wants to do will not be done because you failed to believe, I can do all things. Now, let's go back. I can do all things through Christ. If God tells me to come over to Maria and tells me to lay my hands on her and pray the prayer of faith, and if you pray the prayer of the faith, the sick should be healed. If I had the faith to do it, and I do exactly what God says, God's going to carry out his word. But be very careful. It may not come about the way that we think it ought to come about. Just understand that. Just understand that. God's ways are greater than our ways. His understanding is much greater than our understanding. But God would do exactly what he says he's going to do if I had the faith to come and pray and believe. But if I come over here and lay my hands on her and pray the prayer of faith and tomorrow she dies... You're a fake. You had no power whatsoever. You gave us false hope. That's what someone else would say. Then you would say to yourself, laying there in bed that night, God, I prayed the prayer of faith. What happened? There's my doubt to God. And that's the enemy coming against us. I have learned, I've learned in here, that my God is greater than me, his wisdom is greater than mine, his understanding is greater than mine, far outreaches mine. And I'm to do only what I know to do. And all I know to do is come over here and obey God and do exactly what he says. And the results rest in God's hands. Sometimes it is not about this person being healed, but this person here obeying the will of God, preparing this person to do something greater later on in their life. Can you understand that? This thing works two ways. God's working on me to see if I'm going to be obedient, and then he's going to do what he wants to there. He may raise her up. He may not. But I've got to be obedient to God's word because I have learned that in whatever state I'm in to be content. And if it's a state where God says, I want you to go and do, then I've got to be content in doing that. There is a crying shame when we had a choir that there were empty seats in it. How hard is it for somebody to get up and go up there and just sing the the praises of God? But no, we won't do that. Well, God didn't tell me. Really? Well, maybe you need to turn your your, your hearing aids on because God does want us up there glorifying him. You see? It's simple things. Things to praise God. Things to lift up God. Things to show God that we trust him and we love him. God, I don't care. I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. It doesn't matter. All I want to do is glorify God. I have learned in here that I can do all things. I can preach if God's behind it. I can testify if God's behind it. I can pray the prayer of faith if God's behind it. I can do all things through Christ, but Christ can't do it unless I'm willing to do it. Do you understand that? That's why many people aren't healed. It's because the people aren't willing to go pray for them in faith. I can't get up and go to the hospital. My program's on TV. Ooh, I can't miss my appointment on Facebook. I can read my Bible for five minutes and stay on Facebook for two hours, but I can't miss it. See, we got it all backwards. And that's why the church today as a whole is hurting because we haven't learned to do great mighty things through God because we're content in being, we're content in just being what we are. He has destroyed, the enemy has destroyed our church. But we're going to rebuild. We're going to rebuild. Guarantee you that. He's not going to win that. But what about our lives? What about he tries to destroy our lives? And we want to give up and die and quit. Same difference, isn't it? Does our church rally around one another when we get bombarded and blasted by Satan? Do we rally around one another? Mm. You see, I can do it. 
We've got to learn to reach outside of our families. I've got a great, 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 great loving family in, in my girls, in my sons, and my grandkids. And it's so great because they get it from two parents that were very outgoing and very loving who got it from their parents who were very outgoing and very loving. My daddy, I got a picture of my daddy. He stood at the back door of the church every single Sunday and shook everybody's hand that came through, and my daddy had a big old hand. I got it honest. But I understand that the love they have, if they take it and just keep it for their little family, then this whole church hurts because of it. Their friends they've never met yet. They're prayer partners they've never met yet. But what about you? I can talk about my family. What about you? What about your little circle of friends when you get in church that you speak to and then run out the door? What about others that need you, that need to understand you, need to meet you, need to be able to talk to you and fellowship? This church has got to come together, and it will when we learn. I have learned that whatever state I'm in, we're all going to fellowship. Facebook can wait. Whatever we do to run out of this church and get away from here so long can wait. We need to fellowship. We need to love one another because that's something that we're missing. God says, I want us to give to one another because we never know how they're hurting. You just don't know how it feels when somebody, or you do know how it feels because you've done it. Somebody walks up to you and says, I just want you to know, Rob, I love you, son. I'm proud of you. I mean that. You know how it feels when somebody does it to you. Well, do it to them because I've learned. That whatever state I'm in, my state may be good, but there's somebody beside me that may be bad. God used me to pick that person up. God used me to help that one who's discouraged, going to walk out of here tonight and doesn't want to talk to anybody and get out as fast as they can. God used me to help them know somebody loves them. Somebody does want to talk to them. Somebody does want to fellowship with them. God help me. I got to quit. Got to quit. God strengthens our faith and our hope and our confidence. Way down deep, we know that we can do it. God reminded me today. He said, Danny, you saw me bring Brenda back from the dead. You saw me do it with her heart attack. He said, I told you then, that was the greatest miracle outside of salvation. Now, there's no miracle that you should ever doubt in praying for somebody else because you've seen me do the greatest. Everything else is a small change compared to bringing somebody back to life, he said. And I'm not afraid to pray for anybody. But did not church, should we all be the same way? Shouldn't we? I guess, and then why aren't we? We've got to understand that. We've got to get these things right with God if we're going to do it in our way, way down deep. Our mind, our affections, our will. Philippians 4, 11 and 12 says, Not that I was ever in need, for I've learned how to get along happily wherever I have much or little. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of contentment in every situation, whether it be a full stomach or hunger or plenty or want. What does God expect out of you? What should we give God? What do you want from God? If I were to ask you tonight to take a piece of paper and just simply write on it, what do you want from God? Seriously. I mean, you'd be dead serious. What do you think you'd put on that piece of paper? What do you really want from God? Some of you try to get spiritual. You know, I want to be a closer walk with God. Some of you, be honest, I'd like to have enough money to pay my bills off and live happily ever after. What would you really, t- if you could really, what would you really ask God for? What would you really want? And then you'd have to hear God say, I'll give you what you want if you'll give me what I want. That's called meeting in the middle. And that's all God expects out of us. I have learned that whatever state I'm in, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he is the one. I'm going to move. He's going to move. Explosion is going to take place. Wouldn't you like to see that? Wouldn't you like to see great miracles taking place in this church? Wouldn't you really like to see that? It's going to take a price. Are you willing to pay it? I'm praying that. Mike Zachary has been praying that prayer with me now for several years. Neither one of us are dead yet. That prayer will keep coming. 
I want to see people saved. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered because I hate the devil with all my guts. If I'm willing to pay the price, God said, these things you have seen me do, you should do, and even greater than these should you do. He says, as you go forth, preach my word, signs and wonders shall follow you wherever you go. Don't you want signs and wonders? Don't you want great miracles? Yes. But are we willing to pay the price? Do we believe we can do it? Or is it a fairy tale to you? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm nothing by myself, but through Christ, anything is possible. Do you believe that, church? Wow. Got to get a hold of it. I pray that you'll let that soak into you. I've learned. You got to learn. I've learned. I've learned. Father, help us to learn. Some of us weren't good students in school because we played around too much. We had great ability, but we didn't use it. I'm afraid, God, that's carried over into many of our lives. We had the ability to learn your word, but we play with it too much. We don't want to study. We don't want to be ready for the next test. We're just content and let somebody else do it. God, help us tonight, I pray, every single person in this room to learn how to be content. How? I've learned it. Way down deep inside of me, I know I can do anything. I know that. God, give me the courage to get up and speak, the courage to get up and say, and the courage to get up and go, because I know, God, I know, I know that I can do it. I know I can. And nobody can take that from us, God, when we know it, because that comes from the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Let us all be soldiers that are willing to go forth first, not fearing life or anything else, going forth, God, to set the, poor, the way for others to come to you. Let us be willing to pray, to stand tall, to give, to receive. Teach us, Lord, and let us learn. Thank you for your love, and thank you for this wonderful verse. We tell you we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Not tonight.